On this episode of House of Dula, we finally get to work on Project Eager Brews. We finish prepping the engine bay, get everything ready, and get the garage temporarily set up to become a paint booth, and then we spray the epoxy primer on. So it's going to be a cool episode. Stay tuned. To welcome to the House of Dula. As always, I'm glad to have you here. Finally, today we're working on our 79 Mustang. Guys, it is about time. Man, it has been so hot, and that is really, honestly, the honest to God truth. I haven't worked in this thing so long because it's so hot. There's no point coming out here sweating profusely and getting no work done. And, anyways, we're starting to get cooler weather, and it's time to hit this thing hard. It's time to get this thing painted, engine bay, um, getting everything painted so we can start hooking up the K member, suspension components, test fitting the motor, and all that fun stuff. But, there's a lot of stuff I gotta do. So let me show you what we got going on here. There's a lot of things that still needed. Um, we gotta take care of before we can get to the epoxy coat, okay? All right, if you've been keeping up with Project Ego Brews, this is my little 1979 coupe. It is getting prepped for an EcoBoost motor here from a 2015 Mustang. Look how tiny it is. Isn't that cute? It's really cute. Yeah, 2016 Mustang, I believe. Anyway, so that's a 2.3 liter EcoBoost that's gonna be dropped into here. We've got the Rad AJE K member over here, and we're getting everything kind of out of the way because the idea here is to get the metal, the bare metal epoxy primer so we can start doing body work on it, smoothing out the panels um, with some body filler, and then test fitting everything, and then getting it ready for you know disassembling actually real paint. But this is the hardest, or this is actually the worst part of the car. Um, in the last video you saw me working on, we did the Scott Rod panels, and we've got the KBS seal here. The black part has been KBS rust coated, so you'll see some of the black here. That's KBS rust seal. Um, I've got 3M seam sealer that's meant to go on bare metal. So I've seam sealed the seams on the Scott Rod panels. The Scott Rod panels are fully welded in. They've got all the seams nice and smooth. So no rivets, no bolt, no overlap, no gap, no weirdness. It should look like it's part of the car as it should. Um, we've got the wiper motor relocated. I got a whole video on that. It comes here to the side. It completely is filled up. So this one needs some body flow to smooth out. So the whole top panel here has been smoothed out. We also cut the trim here. I cut this back a little bit. I don't want to go into the pinch welds, but I definitely cut the lip back um, shorter just to smooth it up a little bit, clean it up a little bit. And let's see here. We got the HVAC box out. I want to get the HVAC box out so that when I paint it, I don't have to paint around the HVAC box. And then I can also get you know in these areas back here. So this is more KBS rust. Uh, man, we've built a panel to cover this section here. So I put that on there, welded it in, kind of kind of matches the Scott Rod panels a little bit. Same as this side, um, just kind of covers up that channel that was there. Looks a little bit cleaner, right? Um, so yeah, there's a lot of work to do. Still a lot of body filler work to do. Um, I don't plan to go too hardcore with it. But anyway, so we're not gonna worry about that right now. There's still so much work to do. The idea here, the epoxy primer doesn't mean it's sealed and it's ready for paint. The epoxy primer is just protecting it, uh, the bare metal, because we don't want to be putting body filler over bare metal so what we're doing with the epoxy coat now guys you can go with you know standard 2k epoxy or any kind of different types of primer here but i say 2k epoxy that's not a thing you could put any kind of primer here but the epoxy primer is a primer that sticks to freaking everything and it will become the bottom base most coat on this car it is going to be incredibly strong and from that point everything we put on top of it is going to be also strong because epoxy is just good stuff. So speaking of epoxy, let me show you the products we have over here. Oh my God, the lens is dirty. Okay, now that the smudges have been removed from my lens, I'm sorry about that. Listen, this is what we're gonna be rocking here. This is SPI epoxy, okay? This is it right here. This is a gray epoxy along with the um, activator. It's a one-to-one -one mix. So this is a gallon. This should make uh, two gallons of primer total. Since it's one-to-one, -one, we also have SPI wax and grease remover. Guys, look this stuff up. Okay, Southern poly polyurethanes. This stuff apparently is the bee's knees. We're gonna try it out. Apparently, it's some good stuff, okay? I also got some Osfo. We're gonna be putting this on today. Um, so this is a paint prep rust conversion, okay? This is um, already pre-mixed, and you simply brush it on, wait 24 hours, and wipe it off. It doesn't need to be washed. 
okay so i can't get a you know i can't roll the car out to wash it but we're going to get it nice and clean and this is going to take any kind of rust that may be left over or that is left over in areas like this you know um up in here like these spots even some of the rust we've even got here on you know that started a little little spot rust you know that had been starting to develop here on the scott rod panels stuff like this back in here that this and uh, maybe even back down in here. I may do that whole area there, or I may try to grind that down to metal. But the whole thing is going to get brushed on with Osfo, okay? Okay, guys, I still got a ton of cleanup to do. I got to get the paint off of this because I'm going to mask the car from this point right here forward, and we're going to epoxy everything, including the door jams. This is why I took the doors off on both sides. So the doors have been removed. We're not going to worry about the inner door jams or the doors or anything yet because um, I still have to remove, you know, all the trims, everything. So everything was, that's exposed from the windshield up is gonna be epoxy. But let me show you what we're working on. So first off, 1979, and I believe all the way up to, guys, I could be wrong, it may be 82. Um, when they went with a clutch quadrant, they had, you know, your, a different style clutch, basically a, <laughs> a piece and your clutch cable would pop in a hole this big and that's, you know, your standard plastic piece would slide in there and lock in place. Um, however, this is, of course, as you guys know, this is a Maximum Motorsports um, a clutch adjuster, right? It's a firewall adjuster. So we're going to be using this because I'm going to put in a T5 in the car. Um, but the clutch style that was on the 79 was just a simple cable, okay, that went straight off of the clutch pedal. It didn't have a quadrant. It wasn't self-adjusting. It was adjusted completely by the transmission end, and it used a different clutch cable here completely. So we need to retrofit this area to fit a more modern style Mustang adapter. So we need to do that. And I'm still debating on what to do with the throttle cable. The throttle cable goes here. The only reason I'm debating this is if I ever decide to go back or to ever decide to go to a, you know, an engine that's not electronically controlled, um, I might actually need a throttle cable. This is a throttle cable hole. Okay. Throttle cable, speedometer went here, speedometer cable goes there. We'll still need that. Clutch cable, uh, brake booster, of course. So all these holes have to stay. That's your uh, heater and AC. And these are the two brackets that hold your HVAC box up. This is a screw that goes to your HVAC box as well. So all this stuff, guys, I have to, you know, keep in place that I want to use. So, and on top of that, there's a hole over here I'm actually going to leave uh, just because that's a good pass through for anything that I may be putting in the engine bay and then you put into the uh, pasture kick well, maybe the um, ECU for the EcoBoost. But enough talking, let's retrofit this. Let's get this fitted in here. Let's get the paint off of this and then clean some of this stuff up here and get it ready for OSFO. All right, I'll put it in just like that. Okay, man, it's nice and tight. That is how you do it, fellas. All right, so that worked out good. Next day, we're gonna continue on scraping paint. This is the tools I'm using. Eye protection, ear protection, lung protection, spinning death wheel here. This is heavy. It's like a flywheel. Once it gets going, it doesn't wanna stop. Um, this is great for taking off paint. It is worn down. It doesn't look like this at all when it's new. I'm gonna to continue to use it until it's completely dead. And this is also another wire wheel. It was good, good about taking paint, but this will also etch the metal. So you gotta be careful with these because it will etch the metal. Won't use this, that's just the equivalent for a little drill. But yeah, we'll probably be using this first to get as much paint as we can off until this is gone. And then we'll switch to this or this to get a lot of the rust and scale off. So yeah, cue time lapse now. about stripping paint off but I still got to do this side I got a lot of the rust and scale off so the idea is to get most of the rust you know it's not rusty it's just surface rust so I want to get the major scale off use the wire wheel then we're gonna use OSFO on everything down here all along the sides here but man that is a lot of scraping and that is a lot of paint and primer but you kind of see that's the surface here so 
even here you got a little bit of rust in here again the ospo will go through here when you clean the channels really good because that's going to be masked and painted as well so we'll clean the channels and um, get the rest of this off but that is what i'm talking about right here that's a little bit of pitting the ospo will take care of that the epoxy primer will fill it and body filler will flatten it up it's always going to get dirtier before it gets better okay that's just how it is man it's going to get messy it's going to get dirty you're going to get crap in your eyes okay you're gonna get, you know, your arms gonna look gray like this. <laughs> so it's just is what it is. Okay, we're looking at Ospo here. This stuff is the rust preparation, and it turns it into a cause of iron oxide to chemically change to iron phosphate, an inert hard substance that turns metal black. This also also grows a layer of zinc phosphate to further protect the treated metal from rust and corrosion, where rust is extremely heavy to coastal black. Yeah. Okay, I want to try to get it around these areas here. Now, I have a buddy who uses this stuff and he says, try not to get it on your epoxy floor because it will etch it. <coughs> okay, <coughs> maybe I need to get a respirator on. I'm going to also use a little bit of this on a brush here. All right, the shop towel's not working. I'm gonna to switch to a rag here. A little bit more absorbent. This will help me get up in the nooks and crannies up through here. Okay, Ospo has been applied. I'd be lying if I said it was overnight. It's been more like a week, but it has dried. It was dry the next day. There is zero film, and what's great about it is you can see how it turned the rust black. So look down here too. So it has definitely neutralized the rust and has almost put a interesting color on it. So I put it on pretty much every bit of stock metal, not um, new metal. So just, just the Scott Rod panels were pretty much skipped. Everything else got a coat of Ospo. So it has turned it into this funky color or unique colors, I should say and kind of sets it up and ready for paint. So we're one step closer now to epoxy paint this. Now the deeper the rust, the darker the color, almost the, it changes the color, but you gotta be able to see how this stuff can kind of just changes. But yeah, so like in here, like we coated the crap out of this area here, this section and uh, down here, but it just simply just changes it to that dark black color. So that's cool. I like it. I feel like it's just another step of coating. Um, that we've put on to the car to prepare it for the epoxy. So we're getting really close to be able to spray this thing and I'm excited. Now it says I'm gonna be painting the windshield forward, nothing back, cause that'll be done wherever we'll prep the car. I wanna clean this area out as well, as good as I can, because any dirt that you know is left stuck in here and underneath these clips is gonna get back onto the paint on the epoxy. We definitely don't want that. So I went ahead and, as you can see here, removed the trim away from it. Now that the trim has been removed, there's these clips in place, okay, that holds the trim in here, and they're held on to these little studs that are kind of riveted in the side of the cow here. There's two on this side, and there's two on the driver's side as well. I want to show you guys how I remove these. You got to be kind of careful to not pry on it, but essentially, you remove the loop side first by lifting up, and then once it's up, you pivot out this stud out like this okay but what i want to make sure you guys understand is don't use the windshield i know it's it's easy to say oh and even lift up on it you know right now it'd be perfect situation where i can just you know use the windshield to pry the back section of this part up and then you end up cracking a windshield or shattering it so you definitely don't want to do that and you definitely don't want to do it if it's stuck and it's rusted because what you can do is break the studs off so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to take this piece of the peg which is right here okay so this round little section here just make sure I'm gonna press down on it. That's gonna make sure that it's not rusted to the stud. Or if there's any rust, break it this way before I start pulling up on it. Once that's kind of loose, what I'm gonna end up doing here is taking my hook tool. I'm gonna to attempt to get it behind the round loop here. And again, I'm just gonna to try to use this tool here to try to kind of pry around it without prying on the windshield. was stuck so anyways this part has now been lifted up what we'll do now is just pull the clip 
out this way like that and then release the clip so now I can clean these clips up and we can get all this crap see look at this junk on here man it's dirty so we can get all the crap out of here we'll vacuum it up kind of uh, wire brush it out clean see now we can get our brush in here we can scrape all this junk clean and also I wanted to show you this this is a wedge that they put in from the factory now they put this right on this flat spot here this is what I guess aligns the glass uh, they'll put this in here lay the glass on top of here whenever the factory lays it in and seals it so that is kind of cool that this is still here this may be a thing we're gonna hold on to though and I'll just put them back in place whenever we're done cleaning this will get all this trash look at that man So I think I'm done for the night. It's masked up. And uh, yeah, all we gotta do now is wipe it down um, with some degreaser cleaner and then get the car out. All right, one of the things I'm doing here is blowing all the water out of the tank. Less water, the better once we start spraying. I'm gonna set up the gun, then we're gonna set up my temporary paint booth. I've got some fans we're gonna set up, some box fans. So the idea is to turn this garage into a temporary paint booth. Before we turn my garage into a paint booth, one thing I have not talked about is the paint gun I plan on using. Guys, I went to Eastwood and bought this specifically for my air compressor. This is meant for very low CFM and low PSI. However, it's supposed to atomize really well. This is meant for small air compressors. Now, if you guys know, it's not ideal to do a paint job on a car in a garage, first off, and also with the equipment and compressor that I run. But the compressor I'm using is very common, and I wanna show you guys that it is possible. Um, so to do that, I have purchased a gun specifically for low CFM compressors. It's not necessarily the PSI that I'm worried about. You know, this thing will get up to plenty of PSI, but my air compressor is rated at 8.6 CFM at 40 PSI and 6.4 SCFM at 90 PSI, okay? It's 150 PSI max and it's a 33 gallon two horsepower electric air compressor okay it's a pretty economy air compressor it's got a decent sized tank but we're gonna be painting the car in pieces that's why i'm not doing a metallic we're not gonna be doing the whole tire car at once either um so we're gonna be able to keep the cfm and air compressor down the problem is with a small tank and high cfm let me explain this real quick here this is how much air is moving through your system, moving through your gun. The higher guns, most of them are higher CFM, are going to going to deplete your air supply of your tank very quickly, which means your compressor is going to be constantly running to keep up. And even though you can stop and let it, you know, let it fill up, the problem is, is that it creates a lot of hot air. Hot air is going to create a lot of moisture. That's why I drain my tank. We don't want moisture in our paint, okay? Let's take a look at this gun. This is a Concourse LT100 HVLP paint gun. This is item number 15639 from Eastwood. And this is a budget style. It's definitely not gonna be a you know, $30, $40 gun from Harbor Freight. I think this gun was just shy of 200 bucks or under $200. Uh, but yeah, it's a nice gun. Let's take a look at it. I haven't actually looked at it yet. This is not an unboxing video, so I'm not gonna go to all the detail and everything. Ooh, the cardboard quality is nice. Look at the cardboard quality. Okay, we have a tool. We'll need that to clean the gun. And we've got the gun itself, the cup, the cup that it comes with, and that's it. That's really all that's in there, okay? Nothing, nothing to it. You get a tool and the cup. So the cup will work fine. However, I am weird about keeping my guns clean. So I decided to try out this system here, which I also got. Got, I got from, uh, uh, blah, 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 I can't talk, which I also got from Eastwood. And this is a, uh, a Devil Biss, right? System here, a paint K-cup system, they call it. Uh, no, DE cups, okay? 
Day Cups demo kit, okay? Demo kit comes with just this kind of everything you need, and this is the adapter, okay? I'll post all the parts in the description, guys, in case you want to do this, but this is a specific adapter for this gun from Eastwood's website that um, lets you use the D Cups here from Devil Bliss, and this is the, um, the cool thing about these is these are disposable cups, right? So they got these cup liners here that lets you Fill them up, and when you're done, toss them in the trash, and then you have to worry about just cleaning your gun. So I gotta figure out how this attaches to the gun, how this all works. I'll do that, but the gun itself is it's pretty nice. Um, it feels good. I do have to move the pressure regulator from my old gun over to this one, and we're also going to put on the water separator on the bottom of this. But yeah, you got your flow control and um, your fan. So yeah, we will see, man. What's up, man? Hey. What you doing? What are you doing? Setting up this. Is that paint? That's a paint gun. Cool. Yeah. Snack track? Well, it's nothing in it right now, but. Oh. Yep. Set up the paint gun. We're gonna be shooting epoxy on. What the... color? Oh, it's just gray primer. Oh. But I gotta shoot the engine bay gray primer. Mm. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna set the whole garage up as a paint booth. We got to. Paint booth. Yeah. I gotta put walls here. Well, at least covering up the bike and refrigerator. Get the Mustang out, and then I'm creating a putting fans along the bottom of the wall of the oh. garage door. Oh! So. I got three box fans in the truck. We're gonna set up. Why are you gonna set? Why are you gonna set them up? Suck the dirty air out. Oh. Which means when I do this, I'll probably do the weekend when you kids aren't around. Good morning. It's Saturday morning. It's a beautiful morning. We're gonna shoot this thing today. I'm so excited. Finally getting to it. Everything gets in the way. This has been done last week, and now here we are a week later. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up with some solvent. Actually, I'm going to, I've got some wax and grease remover. But before I do that, I'm going to kind of scuff everything down with a Scotch Brite, just kind of get, um, you know, a sand mark. It's got plenty of sand marks all over just from the wire wheel, so I think we're okay. Um, SBI does say they'd like to use 80 grit. They would like to have bare metal sanded, you know, to an 80 grit to make sure that the primer sticks. I don't think we're gonna have any problems with that just because literally everything has been hit with a um, with a grinder. So, I mean, there's plenty of scratch marks just from the wire wheel. So I think we're gonna be okay. So what we're gonna do though, is wipe everything down, try to find some, you know, some parts that maybe don't have any sanding marks, get everything wiped down and get it clean. Then we're gonna set up our booth, get some plastic up on the things I don't want overspray on, like my son's bike, my fenders, the motor back here, the EcoBoost and um, Let's spray. Okay, our quote unquote paint booth is set up. I got three fans running. I got filters on the front and back of this one because I couldn't get it flush. So we have 20 by 20 AC filters, um, some boxes, and we have an intake over here. So this is pushing cold air and a fresher in from the outside front yard out here. This is the best we're going to be able to do. Let's talk real quick about safety. I still need to put up some plastic on the fridge and um, I was gonna wall up the whole thing. I just don't know if that's feasible since we're only shooting primer this part for it. I think when we definitely do the whole car, we'll need to do the whole garage. Hopefully it's not a mistake. I did put some on the floor so I don't get a lot of you know primer on the floor, but I did have a, or I do have a suit here. I bought this a long time ago. This is a DuPont suit, putting this on. And then also importantly, be using a respirator so I don't want to get any of this crap in my lungs I've told my kids stay off stay away from going outside um, cars are moved outside the campers out there I hope it's not it's should be far away enough another thing we want to do is seal up this right here don't want to get any fumes in the attic so I'm gonna seal this up put some plastic around my nice toolbox the fenders over there and the uh, refrigerator we'll see you soon getting real <laughs> now getting this suit on, this is going to be YouTube gold, baby, right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I figured I'd put some shoes on for this, you know. I never wear shoes, ever. This thing barely fits me. Aha, it's got holes for your shoes. No wonder I couldn't move. Yo, Mr. White. Magnet, <laughs> science. All right, this stuff's pretty nasty. Um, we're gonna spray this, mix this one to one, 
What we'll do is fill this up to five and we'll fill the rest of it up to here. So we'll do one part epoxy, one part this, and we'll just see how it works, how far we can go with just uh, a quart. Okay, that could have gone worse, let's be real. So I'll pull this right up to the five here. I'm going to pull the activator. Okay. Got a stir stick and we are starting to stir this thoroughly together. Okay, so the gun is ready to go. Let's go test the pattern on it. All right. First, I'm going to set, make sure my pressure is set about 30 here. So it's set to 30, and uh, let's go ahead and test the pattern on it now. That looks pretty good. I just want to make sure that the paint's atomized, but I think it's pretty good. What we want to do is make sure we have a nice cigar-shaped pattern here, and it does. It looks like it's pretty good. If I turn up the air pressure or lower the fluid amount, it'll help atomize it. It's just hard to tell right now in the gray. Okay, I think I'm ready to go. I'm going to start. It's a good idea to try to make sure you have a plan on where you're going to start in to try to keep a wet edge running. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to try to start probably from the inside. That way I can crawl into it, get the bottom of it, and then get on the get all the outside last. So, we'll see what we can do here. I'm going to set the gun down. Gently right there. Okay, it is hot. I want to get out of here. All right, not bad. I tell you what, one thing difficult about that was just all the nooks and crannies and angles and having enough paint. At the last moment there, I got low on paint. And um, yeah, I've got overspray all over my camera here, so hang on. Overspray is real. Okay, anyways. Um, this camera's meant for this. But yeah, so the nooks and crannies are hard. I know I wasn't able to get all the way up underneath the radiator core, um, the bottom of it. I want to go back and try to do that. This is just the first coat. We'll do go back and do another coat once the body filler's on. So you can see there's pinholes everywhere. There's complete waviness in my Scott Rod panel over here. Um, and that was expected because I warped the crap out of it. This side was rectified and much better. So this side's not wavy. But um, you can see like all the pinholes and stuff. We're going to go through here with some body filler and then primer it again so yeah 
It came out okay. It's, it's still drying. Uh, my feet are still sticking to the floor. But it looks okay. I'm not in love with it. Um, actually, I, I take that back. The product's great. I'm not completely in love with my work. Let's just say that. I knew that they had some, you know, these Scott Rod panels bend. When you fully weld them in, man, these things warp very, very easily. But I knew that, and then we haven't even put body filler on yet to smooth it out. We will put body filler on the flat parts here, there, here, and here, and then also all along the back here. I knew that was gonna look like crap, no big deal. Again, you gotta have the primer on first before I can put body filler on, so the primer's on. And yeah, I, we'll just have to wait till see when it dries and clean it up, but man, the floor is sticky. Note to self, look at that. Over here, like, it is sticky over by the fan, so. Glad I put that down, but next time, probably need more area. But anyways, it covered pretty good. I missed a spot here on the back part of the uh, the uh, fender uh, shock tower, uh, back part of the shock tower, and I missed a spot over there in the back spot of the shock tower. Um, yeah, lots of nooks and crannies getting around, but otherwise, stuff is laying out pretty good. The gun shot pretty well. I think I had my gun settings uh, decent, so. I'm gonna try to find something where it's flat and see how it laid out on the gun. Yeah, it's okay. So yeah, we're gonna let this dry. Come out here, clean up my temporary paint booth. I wanna show you something though. This is the side that's supposed to stick to paint. This is all like dust and overspray. See that? Also to show you that the fans are actually doing something. They are. Look at all that primer on the filter here. They're sticky. See, they're also on the back of this one. <laughs> so, doing stuff. All right, so I got everything unmasked and it's definitely dry now. Um, it's not tacky anymore. Dry to the touch and that's good. Um, but yeah, they say wait 24, 48 hours, but you know, drying really good. Um, I'm really happy with the way it came out actually. Looks pretty nice, I like the color. Looks good out here. Uh, but yeah, clearly I did not cover my floor well enough. <laughs> you see the overspray is all the way back here. So guys, this stuff is for real, man. I'm glad I covered this up because I didn't want to get my dash pad and nothing back there got it, thank goodness. But man, this, stuff, this stuff's for real. So listen, the fun stuff comes now. Now we can start doing fun crap. I went ahead and already demasked it or you know, pulled the tape off of it. Went ahead and installed the um, firewall adjuster from our clutch. We're gonna install the brake booster. We're gonna install things, okay? Get the motor installed, get the suspension installed, get the uh, caster camera plates installed, and the vacuum canister. We're gonna you know, permanently mount our uh, wiper relocation here and get everything installed and ready to go before I do body filler and finishing work to, you know, to complete it out. So this is the fun part, guys. I get to do fun stuff now, man. We get to test fit the motor. It is really gonna start rolling uh, because in my opinion, a lot of the hard stuff of cleaning all this rust and crap off this thing has been done. So I'm excited. Do I look excited? Do I sound excited? I am excited. I'm excited. So anyways, yeah, we got lots of work to do. Stay tuned for that. I'm ending this video. I know it's a long one. Again, guys, thank you so much for your patience in these videos. I know they're long. I don't wanna leave out totally tons of detail, but this is like two or three work, two or three weeks in the works here of uh, filming all crammed into 30 minutes or less and I know it's hard if not impossible to make these things uh, less than 30 minutes so there it is hey guys I hope you enjoyed it hope it helps you hope it motivates you to get out there and work on your Mustang don't be scared to do this stuff okay you can do it if I can do it anyone can freaking do it so go out there and work on your car and um, yeah we'll see you guys next time on House of Love peace out